Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another video. I'm so happy to have you here. And today's topic, we are going to be talking about video games. And I know if you guys have been following me, you know that in one of my other videos, I talked about role playing video games. Now, this time, I'm specifically just going to target video games on why the pros and cons of video games. And I'm going to get deep into it. But first, I guys, I want to hit you with the beautiful word of God. And lo, it's going to be, you're going to be hit with a beautiful tickling of leaves and feathers because I don't want to hurt you. So bear with me here. So Revelations 21 verse 8. But as for the cowards and the ignoble and the contemptible and the cravenly lacking in courage, the cowardly submissive, and as for the unbelieving and faithless, and as for the depraved and defiled with abominations, as for the murderers, the lewd, the adulterers, and the practicers of magic arts, and the idolaters, those who give supreme devotion to any anyone or anything other than God, and are liars, those who knowingly convey untruth by word or deed, all these shall have their part in the lake that blazes with fire and brimstone. This is the second death. Okay, so how is it? How, you're, okay, you're probably wondering, dude, how are you bringing, how are you talking about video games? And then you're just telling me all these abominations that if people do these things, they're going to go to hell. And so it's like, well, because video games ties in with this. And you're like, how? Video games was not even mentioned in this text. However, let's delve deeper into it real quick. Come with me on this one. So if you look in here, it says those who are practicers of magic arts and I are adulterers. That means they, they worship idols instead of God. Put anything above God. And this is the part right here. Here's the kicker. Those who give supreme devotion to anyone, anyone, that's a person, or anything other than God. Okay, so that's where it kind of hit me in the gut. And so I'm going to explain to you this right now. So those who are practicers of dark arts, magic, actual magic, and you're thinking, well, magic could be just uh, get my cauldron, get my wands, casting spells, mixing all kinds of chemicals, you know, and stuff like that. Yes, 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 yes. That's, that's also magic. Also, uh, speaking curses, enchantments, getting voodoo dolls, pricking them, whatever, right? You're thinking, well, that's magic. It's like, okay, yeah, I'm not denying that. That is magic. But magic has a lot of forms. A magic also comes in mantras. Mantras are hand symbols, by the way. Demonic hand symbols. You can conjure up magic and dark spells from that. And also demons in the process. I'll actually, and just like playing the Ouija board. The Ouija board, you're summoning these evil spirits. People may think, well, I'm talking to a dead loved one. No, you're not. You're talking to an actual evil spirit that's called a familiar spirit. This spirit followed your dead loved one, your dead relative, their whole life. So they can mimic them to the T and make you believe that that's your loved one. When in fact, it's not because they're already going in judgment. They're in God's hands. They're not roaming around here. They're busy where they're supposed to be, either in heaven or hell. So that's between them and God. But it's, if it's their, if it's your parents or, or somebody that you know that passed away and you're playing the Ouija board or doing dark magic, summoning, uh, uh, being a necromancer and summoning uh, 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 people's spirits from the grave, you're not summoning that person. You're actually summoning an evil demonic spirit. That's a whole other topic. But I want to get to video games. And why do I want to hit you guys with video games? Because video games has been a thing that I've been plagued with almost my entire life since the age of four. So at the age of four, I was introduced to video games. I was introduced to all kinds of video games. But the video games that stuck with me was because my father was into violence. He was into fighting. He was into gore and all that stuff. So I, you know, of course, as a child, took that inheritance. I took what he liked and I multiplied it. Because the next generation, whatever they're taught, it says in the Word of God, whatever they're taught as a child, they will not depart from it. So I was taught this by my dad. And you could say, well, you weren't their coach. The thing was, I was exposed to it, and my dad gave it to me, so therefore I was taught to take that in as me, as a part of me. So I played these games. I played violent video games, fighting games, uh, demonic games where you're wizards, warlocks, and all that stuff, where you're vampires, where you're uh, an evil spirit, and you're, and you're doing all this stuff. Well, anyways, you guys know the list goes on with, with all kinds of genres, but not even just those games that are delved into demonic stuff. Even the friendly games, such as Mario. Mario's a big hit. Mario is like, no way, Mario's not demonic. And actually, it represents uh, messian messianic stuff. 
Not messianic stuff, not messiah, messianic stuff, the, the evil stuff. Because, you know, I, I could go deep into this stuff where Bowser, he represents uh, pretty much like Satan because he's a dragon, right? And he's got seven children. They represent the seven abominations, the seven deadly sins. And then you got uh, Mario who actually conjures up magic and can possess people with like this hat. He can put a hat on somebody and go inside them and possess that creature and operate in them. See, what he's doing is it's dark magic stuff. And he's also stealing stars. Stars is actually people's missions that they were given in their life. And I know you guys are probably thinking, man, you're just pulling this out of your out of your pocket. You're making this up. It's like, no, I'm not making this up. This is real spiritual stuff that goes on. So video games was a trap to ensnare us to get us stuck in a virtual world instead of living the real world. And you could think, well, it's not harmless. You know, what about people who watch sports on their free time? What about people who uh, watch movies on their free time or TV shows? That's another topic, and I'm gonna, I'll address that in other videos, but those are just as demonic as video games. So, for instance, I'll tell you this if you guys look up uh, PlayStation, PlayStation symbol is supposed to be a P and a S, right? PlayStation. So, it's a station where you play on. And so, I'm gonna go a little bit further back after I explain this real quick. So, the P is like that, and the S is behind it. It almost makes it look like an infinity sign. Actually, this is a representation of the Egyptian gods in the, uh, in the uh, hieroglyphics that you see in the pyramids and in Egypt and all that, and all the artifacts that they found, that all these uh, archaeologists found, these symbols. These actually are demonic symbols representing these, the fallen angels. So, the gods that they're worshiping are actually fallen angels in the word of God that God cast it down because they were the sons of God at a time. So if these angels were the sons of God, then that means they're a piece of God. So they kind of are like a deity, but they're not the almighty God, the only God you should be worshiping, which is the one true living God, Jesus Christ. So they had this plan. They had this plan to get us to not believe in Christ, to detour our minds off God. So what was the best way with entertainment? So it first started not even with video games, not even with you know electronical devices and stuff like that. It actually started way back then with Dungeons and Dragons and Magic Wizard games like card games, trading card games and all that stuff. Even Pokemon Yu-Gi-Oh fall into that category as well. But Dungeons and Dragons was a game where you played, where you level up, you you'd uh, fight dragons together. Somebody would would walk you through a scenario. And then you guys would use your imagination, you write down your stats, your health bar, your, your MP bar, all that stuff. Just like what's happening in the digital world that we are in today. So that was a prototype of what was going to happen in the electronic world that was to come. But this was all demonic because it involved all kinds of evil symbols, all kinds of evil spells. And people didn't know because in the Word of God it says the power of death and life is in the tongue. So if you're casting these spells on people of death and of plagues and of ta absorbing their power and then using their power against them, the thing is in real life, you're taking their soul energy because you know how some people say, man, if you hang out with this negative person, they just drain the energy out of you. It's because it's true. They have a demonic entity that is around them, this evil spirit that's a vampiric spirit that absorbs your your soul energy, your energy of, of actually being able to... Uh, maintain this body without having to go with rest, right? Because you're supposed to get enough sleep to energize you to go about your day so you can, can walk around and do the activities that you need to do throughout your day. But those kind of people absorb and take that energy away it's because they're taking your soul energy away. And you don't even know it. You just say, man, this person drains me. I don't want to be around them. Which you have uh, an alarm that went off in you saying, I need to stay away from this person. They're super negative. They make me feel horrible about myself. And they, and they just drain my energy. They're just a drag. And that's true. But these games, that's what these games do. And I, I know you guys are probably laughing when it's going, dude, you're full of balonky donkey. And I'm really not because for uh, about 21 years, I was an addict of video games. I'd get stuck in video games. And God, the Holy Spirit, showed me something interesting about video games. Because me, when I'd play these games, I would I would feel like the character. I get to role play as this character, right? So I'm I'm taking on the persona of this character in this virtual world. Or even if it was a game where I can customize my own character, my own avatar, I'd make them into my image, of course, and, and live them out in this world and be like, man, this world is so much fun than my real world because my real world sucks. That's how I looked at it because I really wasn't living. I was too trapped in the fantasy realm instead of real reality. 
But a lot of us, I'm noticing in society today, we're all trapped in the video game world, in the entertainment world. And video games is taking a big role. It's taking a big step into society. And it's detouring our minds and veering us off the path of Jesus Christ. And people are saying, well, what about the Christian video games? No, they're just as bad. Because the thing is, God wants you to live out your life in Him. He doesn't want you to live out your life in a virtual world where you just serve God in a video game. And then when you're outside of the world, you're not even living Christ-like at all. He wants you to be Christ-like in everything that you do. And video games is another way of getting your mind off of who Christ is. Because it doesn't want to get you into the Word of God. It gets you into all these other worldly things. And so I'm going to explain to you. Why I was such an uh, an addict to these games. So for a long time, I, I played them for 21 years until God freed me from it. But I would always ask God, why was I so addicted and why was it so hard to quit? I made so many vows back in the past that I'm going to quit games and I'm going to mature up and become a man, right? And it was so hard because every time I tried my hardest to get away from the games... I'd get pulled back even more to play even more and I'd buy even more games and what was constantly on my mind was these video games. Not even God. I would talk about the fictional world wherever I go. I talk to people about fictional characters. I talk to them about uh, certain demons, certain entities, how to level up, how to this, how to that in, in the gaming world. And I'm not even talking about the real world. I, I, I could care less about politics. I could care less about our government. I, c I could care less about our economy. I was just like, just give me this games and everybody, let's talk about the fictional world. That's why I loved Comic-Con. I love role plays. I love video games. But I'm noticing today, this generation, the generation that's coming after us, they're really into this gaming world that it is so terrible that it is dumbing them down physically and spiritually. And it's not their fault. It would be the predecessor's fault of not getting the children off these things and getting them into things that are actually productive for them. They need the Word of God. The Word of God will help us to conduct ourselves to live a healthy lifestyle, spiritually, physically, psychologically, and mentally. And it has helped me to reconstruct my mind, the matrix dome of my mind, to get it where, man, I know I can live now. I don't feel trapped. I don't have to go back and play these games to feel free anymore. I don't have to get into that. And the crazy thing about games, it makes it tethers to pornography. When I was into video games, I was so addicted to porn, and I, I couldn't I couldn't separate the two. I would tell myself, all right, I'm gonna I'm done watching porn because I know it's bad, but I'm gonna still play games. But every time I would play the games. I would get sucked back into porn. And I'm like, how is this? These two connect. In today's society, we have a lot of the youth that are playing games and are addicted to porn. It's just like, how did those two go together? I'm going to explain it to you. Just be patient with me. I'm going I'm to get to this point. You guys got to bear with me. So, just like I said in Revelations 21.8, or just like the scripture said, it says, those who practice dark magics are put anyone in anything more devoted than God himself. So, where's your mind at? That's the question is. Where's your mind at? Is your mind on things above or is it on things of the earth? Because you got to make sure you, you're established in Christ so your mind is on things above, not things of the earth. Because video games is going to pass away. This world's going to pass away. Even the heavens are going to pass away. But God abides forever. So, if you're in God, you're forever. You're forever. You're eternal. So, God was showing me I was living in an ephemeral lifestyle, a temporal lifestyle lifestyle so god showed me this so when i was playing the games note this just picture this for a moment you know most of the time you sit crisscross applesauce or you sit on the sofa and you have the remote control right and you put the remote control right where your pelvis is at right so around that area because that's where your resting place is for your arms so you don't get tired of holding the remote up playing right so for me what helped me to over for to notice this was when God finally cleared me from playing these games and getting stuck in pornography, I'm completely free. I'm sober from this stuff. And I'm so grateful to God that I'm free from it that I could tell you guys the secret, uh, the secret of the demonic plan that keeps you hooked. So the evil likes to do this. Witches and warlocks and stuff like that like to cast spells, right? So if you're not built in God, these spells will harm you. You'll be bewitched. You'll, you'll be hooked on something, you'll be addicted to something, and you, you can't find out why you feel you have you get these impulses to do this thing that you're trying to quit. I hated pornography to the core. I would cry each time after I was done watching it. I'd cry out to God, say, God, 
I hate this or just cry out. I hate this. I want to quit. But then every time I play games, I get right back into porn. But every time I stayed away from games, I was able to stay away from porn. It was weird. So here, here's the here's the secret to the enemy's uh, devices. So you, you normally sit down in that position, right, when you're playing games. Crisscross applesauce or on your knees or just sitting on your tush and you have the controller about where your pelvis is at in your stomach area. And so you're moving the characters or the or whatever your game you're playing with your thumb. That's how you move the cursor around. And then with the other thumb, you're pressing in commands, button commands to, to initiate initial reactions in the game, to interact in the game, right? So the crazy thing is God showed me that Buddhist and Catholic monks that practice meditation, they go crisscross applesauce or on their knees or sitting on their tush, and they put their hands where their pelvis is at in, in this motion. And what they do is to move and, and maneuver energy, the spiritual energy, they move it with their thumb, right? They move their thumb around in, in weird motions. And then with their right thumb, they'll move in weird patterns and making symbols with their thumb. But they they go blank-minded. So when they go blank-minded, they're inviting a, 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 a spirit. They think it's a good spirit, but it's actually an evil spirit. They invite this evil spirit into them, and the spirit takes control of their hands, and, and they start uh, conjuring this spiritual energy and you're invoking these actually demonic spirits to inhabit you to do whatever the heck they want to do to you, right? Because the enemy wants to, uh, to kill, steal, and destroy you. They want to take everything from you and destroy you completely, obliterate you because they hate you. They hate the fact that God loves you and has mercy on you and is willing to accept you back into heaven. They're mad about that because they don't have that chance. They made a big mistake by sinning against God and they don't have mercy because they knew way more better than we did. They had more knowledge of Christ than we did now. But now we do have all... The, the knowledge of God because God gave us his Holy Spirit. So we have God living inside us. So we have the all-knowing God, omnipotent God, omnipresent God inside us now. If we're really believers of Christ, we can tap into that right now. So we're sitting here and you're, you're doing this. So without you knowing, when you take that remote and you play this game, most of the time when it's one of your favorite games, you kind of go brain dead and you don't really need to know what's going on in the game. You just muscle memory, right? They say muscle memory. But what you're actually doing is inviting this evil spirit that's connected with this game and this the mandras that you're doing with your hands and you're and you're and you're punching in curses. You're punching in in, in different shapes. You're punching in uh, different commands in with your thumbs into you, not you. So you think you're playing the game, but the game is actually playing you. The evil spirits are playing you. And so when they inhabit you and they do this stuff, you're putting hexes over yourself that puts an enticing spirit to make you addicted to the game while you can't get away from it, while you're so addicted. And some of us are addicted to a specific type of genre or a specific type of game. And I was guilty of that where I was addicted to a specific type of genre and a specific type of game where I was just a, such a fanatic. But when I played the game, muscle memory would kick into my thumbs. Blah, 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 blah. You know, it just, it just become natural. And I'm all like, man, I hardly had any practice to doing this. How did it become natural? Because I was invoking an evil spirit to inhabit me, just like the Buddhists and the Catholics do when they sit and meditate. They think they're inviting this spirit, this uh, spirit guide that's going to help them to be, to reach enlightenment. But for us, we're trying to reach a, a enlightenment of state of mind of peace where we can have fun playing this game, right? But you're not knowing you're inviting evil spirits. And that's why you keep getting pulled back to doing it. Because the, the evil spirits are having you... Do a meditation and punching and stuff because you're going brain dead while you're playing the game. Autopilot mode and it's just all muscle memory while they take the front wheel and they're starting to control you. And you're thinking, well, I don't get possessed by demons because I make the choice to play the game. True. But that's why you have a lot of problems in your life. That's why you suffer from depression. That's why you suffer from anxiety. That's why you suffer from addictions to other drugs. You guys suffer from addictions to fighting. That's why you quarrel with people. If you can't play your game, you get really mad. Because these evil spirits, all kinds of variety of spirits inhabit you. And they trigger you when you go off your emotions. Because God says, if you're of the spirit of God, the fruit of the spirit, one of the fruit of the spirits is self-control. You wouldn't lash out like that. You would have self-control and a lot of us don't. Most of us want to sit brain dead and enjoy a game because the stress of life is just too much. And that's what Lucifer wants to do with you guys. He wants to make life so stressful that you delve into entertainment to escape the stress of the world instead of addressing the problem by giving it to God and God fix it for you and you stay away from that evil. So another thing about the video games that makes it evil I don't care if you're playing a Christian video game because there's Christian video games out there where 
you can play the, the Old Testament, the Bible. And I'm looking at this, I was like, but you're putting it on these demonic devices. These demonic devices are altars made by demons. They're made by demons. They're made by man, but inspired by demons. Just like the Holy Spirit is, just like the Bible is written by man, but inspired by the Holy Spirit. So it's whatever spirit we're operating. You're either operating on evil spirits or you're operating on the Holy Spirit of God. So these spirits had us create these systems to keep us detained. Actually, entertainment, one of the de definitions is to detain you. So these evil spirits are detaining you in entertainment to get your mind on that instead of really focusing on the real problem. Because this is the problem right here. This video games is problematic and these systems are problematic because they stop you from tapping into finding out who you really are. You guys are actually all children of God, but you have to accept that. And if you can't, then you're accepting you're a, you're a son or daughter of Satan of this world and you will perish. That's why I'm saying repent and come to Christ. I'm telling you guys this stuff because God revealed this to me that doing this is you're doing meditations, you're inviting evil spirits while you're playing these video games without you knowing, because you could say, well, my video game's Tetris, or my video game is Call of Duty, or my video game is Super Mario Bros., or my video game is uh, Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> you know Grand Theft Auto's bad, period. More, you know, just you just go on a, a, a list, a plethora of video games, and it's just like, it doesn't matter what it is. It's what altar you're putting it through, because even if you have it on your phone, you're still doing the same thing. You're, you're being detained and you're inviting evil spirits into your life because you're going brain dead to play a game because the stresses of the world's too much. And you could probably say, my life's not stressful. I just like playing video games. Well, that doesn't even matter. That doesn't even matter. Because the thing is, even if your life is not stressful, you got to ask yourself, why do you have to play this to have fun? Why can't you just go live life? Why can't you go hike? Why can't you go rock climbing? Why can't you go visit the poor, help the sick? Help the widows, help the orphans. Why can't you go and um, travel the country? Why is it on your free time? Why can't you learn a new language? Why is it got to be video games? You're not learning anything from video games. And people could say, well, I learned how to speak a language. You know, well, good for you. Well, that's good for you. But not without you knowing, while you learn that language, you're inviting an evil spirit. There's pure ways of doing things. God can't redeem those altars. Actually, in the Bible, there was altars made for Baal worship. And you know what God said to do to those altars? He didn't say go and redeem those and put uh, sacrifices on those altars to me. God said, no, go destroy those altars, burn them to the ground, and don't erect them ever again. And now go make an altar unto me and praise me. That's what God had us do. So God wants us to destroy these consoles and get them out of your house, get them out of your children's grasp, even the portable ones, guys. I'm telling you, all it is, is it's going gonna, it's gonna to desensitize your children. It's going to rob your children of a future. And they're going to be so addicted that their children are going to be addicted. And actually, this is a way for people to get into actually practicing dark magic. Because a lot of these, these games that are being promoted, there's a lot of wizards, sorcerers, and witches, and they're good guys. There's no such thing as a good or 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 a, a magical white sorcerer or witch. They're all evil. Magic is magic. It's demonic. You're either working in the power of the Holy Spirit or you're working in the, the deviation, the dark magic of the dark arts of Satan. You got to pick a side, guys. You got to pick whom you will serve, the one true living God or all these other gods and deities that are actually not even God. They're fallen angels because they disobeyed God. So I don't, guys, I don't want you to be a disobedient child and fall into the hands of Satan. I want you to be in God's hands that he'll protect you and guard you from this wickedness. So when I finally got fed up, God freed me from this, from these curses, from this addiction, from these video games. So you're, you're, you're practicing witchcraft without you knowing you're practicing witchcraft, even if you are playing a game that you think is harmless. You're doing the motions, you're doing the things. It's God, God showed me this, that if you're, if you're serving the Lord and say you go to a, a rock concert that's worshiping Satan... And I'm saying, well, I'm here worshiping God, and I'm in this environment with these people, and but these people are worshiping Satan. You know what God says about that? Bad company corrupts good character. Don't go into those environments. I, you can't say you're a Christian and go into a club like a rave where people are popping pills and doing Percocets and, and worshiping devil music and say, I'm here to save people. Actually, if not, not some wizard or witch is going to come after you. Act like your best friend and curse the crap out of you. To where you walk out of there and you're wondering like, why am I starting to lose faith in Christ? Because bad company corrupts good character. Don't go to the devil's playground. And what we're doing is we're taking the devil's playground in our own homes with our entertainment systems. If you're not using your TV to stream sermons, watch preachers preach the real word of God, not these prosperity preachers. 
And if you're not going on your phone, using your phone to look up lessons, to read the Bible, and, and to learn more about God, then you're using these devices for all the wrong reasons. But I'm here to tell you, these count, these consoles, these video game consoles, you cannot use them for God. You can try all you want, but you'll still be summoning these evil spirits because these were made and created to detour, to veer away, to draw you away from God, to get you stuck in this fictional world so you're not living reality. That's what it's for. That's what video games were created for. These people who create all these cool video games that you think are awesome, they made it flashy and fun and cool so you get distracted by the cool stuff and the flashy colorful stuff not knowing down here you're over here summoning spirits and you're getting addicted to it and you're wondering why you're getting cranky because you can't play it. You're wondering why, man, why is it my life sucked now? Since I play these video games, they're so fun. I'd rather hurry up, just get my job done with, kiss my wife, and get to my and get into my gaming man cave and play with my homies. Why are you why, why do you think it's ruining reality for you? And I could testify 21 years of experience of playing these games, and finally I asked the Holy Spirit, why are we being drawn back into these games? Why are we being, and why is it connected to porn? That was another thing that hit me. Why is, it, why is it connected to porn? Because it's another way to detain your mind because Satan wants to sexualize you. He wants to get you so perverse, not even just your mind on idols, worshiping other things you shouldn't be worshiping, but also desecrating your flesh. Because it says in the Bible that if you give into sexual morality, you're desecrating yourself, not even people. You're destroying your own temple. That was made for God to inhabit. you got to stop doing that. And these spirits are connected. This sexual spirit is connected with video games. I don't know why. That's just how they collaborate with each other. You play one, you get the other. There's no just, I'll play one and exclude that one. Even if, say, if you do play games and you're not addicted to porn. But guess what? If you have kids, those kids will probably end up being addicted to porn. Because you're allowing the spirit to be a generational thing now. You allow them access through this video game. To have access to your soul. Once they get a hold of your matrix, your mind, they get a hold of everything else. And you're actually giving them not only your mind, but you're giving them your body. You're pretty much sacrificing yourself to these things. And they're taking hold of your body and using you as a puppet. You could be thinking, well, yeah, I'm going to go play some games and, and, and say that that's your own decision. But actually, no, it's not. It's an enticing spirit that says, dude, we had a blast when we played that game. Yeah, I can't wait for tomorrow night with my homies. We're going we're gonna to hit it up. We're going to hit up some COD. We're going to hit up some Fortnite. We're going to hit up some of this wizard versus magic crap. And, 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 and then you, you're, you not knowing in the spirit, these evil spirits have you on puppet strings. And they're drawing you close to that system. They're like, here's the altar. You already worshipped us. You made a covenant with us. Now you want to play us. And also, too, we got you to do curses and hexes on yourself while not knowing that you're not, without you knowing that you're meditating and you're, and you're invoking us, that we got you now. Not only do we got you, we're going to get your kids, we're going to get your children's children, and we're going to keep going down the generations because it happened to my family. My parents' parents before them got caught up into a little bit of entertainment with those board games and stuff. And guess what my parents had? When video games and the consoles came out, they got into that. And guess what they did? They passed it down to me. And guess what? I was trying to pass it down to my nephews. I had to go and repent and say sorry to my nephews because I already started getting them addicted to fictional characters and focusing on them instead of God. It was a terrible thing. But since God broke that curse and showed me this is why everybody's addicted to games, this is why people who try to quit go back. It's because they're punching in curse commands into their life. And because they're watching porn, stuff they shouldn't be watching in secrecy. They're discreet about it. And that's the problem. And the thing is this. So how do I get away from that? And I'm going to tell you guys how to get away from that. So the way to get away from video games... And the way to get away from pornography, because these tie in, is getting yourself out of the situation. Getting yourself out of the source of temptation. God says if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it into the fire. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off and cast it into the fire. That was a hyperbole. That was an analogy of what you're supposed to be doing in spirit. And so let me break it down for you. When he means about plucking those eyes out and cast them into the fire, is... Take yourself away from the source of temptation. So if this 
video game system is causing you to waste a lot of time and causing you to fight with your wife or, or your children or your friends and stuff like that or causing you to drink and get into drugs or causing you to curse people on there, what you need to do is throw the system away. First step, acknowledge that you don't like it. you got to hate it first. Acknowledge that you don't like it and throw it out. Once you get the altar destroyed, which would be that console, now the second thing you guys need to do is you need to start filling yourself up with Jesus Christ. You need to start reading the word and you need to start praying and you need to start surrounding yourself with godly people that are going to keep you on track. Because if not, if you surround yourself with compromising Christians, they're going to tell you there's nothing wrong with you playing games, especially if it's Mario, you're all right. And Mario's got a lot of demonic symbolism, all kinds of stuff. You guys look it up, research it yourself. If you don't want to, then that's you wanting to be ignorant. And I don't want you to be ignorant. I don't want you to go not knowing because I don't want you caught into this snare that I was caught in for 21 years. And I absolutely hate it. I absolutely hated it. I would, and, and, and just it waste a lot of my time. And I would feel like most of my life revolved around games. Games didn't revolve around me. I revolved around it. It became my God. So destroy the consoles. Get them out of there. Don't, take, don't keep any of the video games. Get rid of all of it. Destroy it all. Just like God says, destroy the altars, destroy the groves, destroy the pillars, destroy anything that is given to idol worship. Get it out of here. Burn it. And the second thing is to fill yourself up with God. To start asking God, what is it that you want to put in my life? Which would be the Holy Spirit. Ask God to fill you up with the Holy Spirit. Get into his word. Surround yourself with godly people. And you'll be able to overcome this. You will be able to stop the enemy from perpetrating. You'll be able to stop the enemy from seducing and manipulating you with these spirits. I'm not going to go into detail about like what kind of spirits it is, but in prayer, because each spirit is, you could describe a lot about it, but I'm, I'm going to actually right now, if you guys are sick of playing video games and you know it's wasting your time and you kind of got this little uh, notion or you got this kind of hunch that you know, this thing invokes a lot of stuff, makes people angry, makes me angry, makes me a little tired. Uh, and all I want to do is play these games. And I kind of just want to hurry up and do my real life stuff and get back into the gaming world. If you're tired of this, and especially the pornography with it, you're really sick of it. Right now, I want to pray with you. I want to do a little prayer to help you get a kick start, to help you to push the stuff away and to press into God. And so that God can heal you and fill you up with love and with freedom. Because if he can do it for me, my Lord Jesus Christ, he can do it for you. So guys, pray with me if you're really serious and you want the video games terminated in your life. And you want the addiction of pornography terminated in your life. Pray with me right now. Now, it's not me that's going to do it. It's the Holy Spirit that's going to do it. God says we got to be willing vessels. You're will, we're, we're, if you notice in the demonic realm, we're willing vessels to do demonic things like playing these horrible video games, playing these video games that get us stuck into the virtual world and also watching this pornography that's actually really not good for our, our spiritual and physical health. And actually for our marriage, if you're married, you're, you know, you're cheating on your wife, you're fornicating with your eyes. Or if you're a wife, you're cheating on your husband by fornicating with your eyes. Why? All right, guys, so we're going to say a prayer. If, if you're sick of being addicted to video games and the consoles and you're sick of pornography, pray with me right now. It's not me that's going to heal you. It's not you that's going to heal you. It's the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ that's going to heal you. So right now, come with me together. Father God, right now, in Jesus Christ's name, Lord, we come together and we bring before you the altar of video games and the altar of pornography. And right now, Lord, we bind the spirits of video game. We bind the incubus, the succubus, and we bind that vampiric spirits and the and the werewolf spirits, Lord, and the mermaid and the siren spirit that is enticing us and Leviathan and Behemoth and Python spirits and the scorpion spirits, Lord, that are causing us to draw back into these addictions that we actually hate. And all enticing, soothing spirits and all familiar spirits of the altar of video games and the altar of pornography. We go right now and we bind these spirits hand and foot, cast them into the pit of darkness where they will remain there until the great white throne of judgment for all eternity. And we call upon the fire of God on these altars and we destroy it in the name of Jesus. Warrior angels of Jesus Christ, go forth and destroy these altars and reduce them to ashes in my brothers and sisters' lives that want it destroyed right now in the name of Jesus. Right now, Lord. So say with me, guys, right here. Lord, I hate this sin. I love you, Jesus. I choose your ways. I love your truths. 
I love your commandments and your precepts. I love who you are, Lord, and I thank you, Lord, for sending Jesus Christ, for purging me from all this sin, covering me in your blood, and filling me up with the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, right now, in Jesus Christ's name, we command these spirits to be bound and thrown into the pit of darkness, while they will remain there until the great white throne of judgment. And we command and command the fire of God on these altars. We command the fire of God on these demonic altars, the video game altars, and the pornography altars. And we destroy them in the name of Jesus Christ. And right now, guys, we're going to retrieve back things that the enemy has taken from you. Just follow along, okay? So, Jesus, right now, we claim back all our soul fragments, all our stars, and all our DNA that the enemy has taken in the spirit away from us. And we send warrior angels of Jesus Christ to go forth, bring those back onto us, integrate it back into our soul, man, and we seal it off with the name of Jesus Christ and the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. And warrior angels, come forth. We give you, warrior angels, all the addictions, all the, the video games and pornography addictions, shattered soul fragments of the Satan, and we put them into your hands, warrior angels, and we say, take them into the pit and bind them there for all eternity to remain there until the great white throne of judgment. And right now, we ask you, we ask, uh, hallelujah, Jesus, to fill us up with your Holy Spirit in every spot that we allow the enemy to have control of our hands, all the way from the top of our head to the soles of our feet, right now in the name of Jesus Christ. And we ask you, Lord, to fill us up with your joy, your peace, your patience, your kindness, your goodness, your forbearance, your long-suffering, your self-control, and your faithfulness, Lord. And the courage and the boldness to be addicted to you, Lord, and your righteousness. We speak justice and righteousness into ourselves right now in the name of Jesus Christ. And we love you, Lord, and we thank you, Lord, for freeing us. And help us, Lord, that we speak the word of God into us. That you put a craving, a hunger and thirst and craving in us, Lord, to read your word and to pray and to surround ourselves with God-fearing people that love you, Jesus. And we love you, Lord, and we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity, and we thank you, Lord, for the freedom, and we rejoice that we are free, and we rejoice that our names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Hallelujah. Amen. All right, guys, you got to be thankful and grateful to the Lord. So I want you to be excited. I want you to shout. And I want you to thank Jesus Christ for freeing you and filling you up with the Holy Spirit. You have to believe. Faith of a mustard seed. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you within. And I know he can. If he did it for me, he'll do it for you. He died for the whole world. He rose for the whole world. And he gave the whole world the Holy Spirit. So we don't have to be a slave to sin and, the, and these encrypted and demonic altars that have kept us trapped and enslaved and ensnared for all eternity. We're free from that through the blood of Jesus Christ. We fight the enemy with the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ. And the word of our testimony, we testify what Jesus did for us. So be grateful, guys. I love you guys. Thank you for listening. And if you want more details about this, do comment to me. I, I will get back to you if, if, if you need uh, more information about these specific topics or you're warring with something. Uh, I'll, I'll help you as best as I can. But what I ask you to do is take this to God personally. Talk to him like a friend. Ask him to help you. He will give you the answers. I've been asking God about these things, and he's been revealing these things to me. I didn't go and ask somebody else. It says in these times that if we lean into the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will teach us all things. Amen. It's God teaching you. I love you guys. Thank you for listening, and I appreciate your time. And as always, God bless you guys.